Something that is a super rarity nowadays are companies who stand behind their products with great customer service. Let me tell you what, this company right here, hannahsmods.com, awesome customer service. Whether you're shopping online for your vape gear, juice, hardware, whatever, or whether you're going to a brick and mortar, buying something over there, customer service to me is at least half the experience, at least 50%. So here's my experience with Hannah's Mods. I've been looking for a DNA 20 for the longest time. I didn't even think about the DNA 30, just got rid of my DNA 20, gave it away in a giveaway, and I had to get another one. Was looking around, never even heard of Hannah's Mods up until about a month ago. Found them online through Juice Junkies actually. I went to their site, saw that they had a number at the bottom. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna call them up. Ring, 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 hello? I couldn't even believe it. Most companies nowadays, they leave a number at the bottom of their site in the contact form. You call them, you have to leave a message, and most of the time, that company will get back to you, but within 24 to 48 hours. Hell, I've had experiences to where I call in, leave a message, the company never even gets back to me. This company, they answered. Couple rings, phone picked up. Guess who was on the other line? Trent. Trent is the owner of Hannah's Mods. He's the owner and operator. Super cool cat. I had a conversation with him for at least 15, 20 minutes. At first, I didn't even tell him who I was. And I actually got lucky because he wasn't selling a DNA 20 chip in his devices. He was selling a DNA 30 chip in his devices. And he actually happened to have the first batch of them ready to go. Fortunately, I got lucky and was able to buy one from him right off the bat. That wasn't the only time I talked to him over the phone. I talked to him over the phone two more times after that. And you know a company cares a ton about their customer relations when they ask you questions. So the customer service experience for me with Hannah's Mods, talking to Trent over the phone three times was an absolute pleasure. This guy was very energetic. You could hear his passion in his voice. And for me, I'm all about passion. I'm all about it. Love the passion. You know, you gotta have the passion. If you don't have the passion, that's not good. And uh, he definitely had that passion. All right, so now you know I'm impressed with the customer service, but the question is, am I impressed with this product. First of all, for those of you guys who do not know what a DNA 20 or a DNA 30 is, it's a chip that goes into this product. This happens to be a DNA 30 chip device. Super rare right now, but the DNA 20 chip, the DNA 30 chip, the Kick, the Kick 2, all those products are made by a company called Evolve. And Hannah's Mods actually purchases those chips, the DNA 20 chips, the DNA 30 chips from Evolve puts them in their own devices and sells them. Like a lot of these other companies, for example, Phased Box Mods. I know that they're no longer in business at the moment, but when they were, they were doing the same thing. They were buying these chips from Evolve, putting them in their devices and selling them. And this device is a HANA Mod V3, and V3 meaning it's got the DNA 30 chip in there. It's the new DNA chip. And the DNA 30, meaning it goes up to 30 watts. It actually ranges between 7 and 30 watts. And I'll tell you what, this thing is a freaking beast. Before I go over all the specs, dive in, show you guys a close up, what this thing looks like, how this thing works, the internals, because I'm going to take off the back cover, show you guys what it looks like inside. I'm going to vape on her, tell you what I like, tell you what I don't like. Alrighty. So right now I've got her set to 22 watts. This actually does not come with the uh, V3. This is actually a uh, Zenith RDA with a Ninja Mods drip tip. Sick as tits. I've got a 1.1 ohm flat bastard build in here. This thing hits like a freaking champ. The DNA chips are all regulated devices, okay, which means that it regulates the battery you have in there, okay. It's going to make every hit be the same all the way through the duration of that battery life of the battery. So for example, I'm hitting this up, 22 watts. I've got a fully charged battery in here with a 1.1 ohm micro coil at 22 watts with a fully charged battery. I can go for about three and a half hours before that battery dies. And for the three and a half hours that I am vaping at 22 watts, every hit that I take is gonna be straight voltage at 22 watts. It's super consistent. And that's what I love about these DNA chips, especially at higher wattages like 20 to 30 watts. 30 watts, forget about it. Like I said, this is at 22 watts. I'm gonna take her up to 30 watts. Go ahead and skip all the bullshit and get to it. 30 watts. Every coil build that I put in this device, or any device for that matter, whether it's another RDA, 
a K-Fun, a Russian, it hits like a freaking champ and it's consistent. And the beauty of it is, is I can go all the way to 30 watts. 30 watts and it's regulated. Just peachy. It is like a warm hit and it's the same hit every time. Every time. Big difference going from this to a mechanical mod. And that's why I emphasize in my mechanical mod reviews, mechanical mods are all gravy. I really love them. I appreciate the art, but they're unregulated. You put the battery in, you vape. I mean, you can make them regulated with something like a kick too, but that only goes to 15 watts. You're not going to get the full vaping experience. Shit, I got a friend that builds between 0.2 and 0.5 ohm coils, and he's vaping sometimes up to 60 watts. But how long is he vaping the 60 watts for? And then every hit you take, the quality of the vape goes down because it's unregulated. This is not the case. Like I mentioned, the three and a half hours that I can vape at 22 to 25 watts with this device is fully regulated. It's straight voltage every time and it's consistent. Right now I've got to set to 30 watts with this 1.1 ohm coil and I can get a good two to two and a half hours of quality vape. The same vape. I will go with the quality of this vape any day of the week than any mechanical mod out there which I have to switch batteries out every freaking 30 to 45 minutes. I'm telling you. It's a whole new ball game when you're vaping on a regulated device at 30 watts. For those of you guys who are watching this who own a DNA 20, from 20 watts to 30 watts is a big difference. If I were to vape with the same build on the DNA 20 that I used to own at 20 watts, that's like 5 volts less than with this 30 watt device with the same build. <laughs> big difference in heat, big difference in flavor production. I'm going to tell you what. I am super duper in love with you right now, you Hannah Mods V3. I can lick you up and down. But before I do that, we better go ahead and cut to the pros and cons. Pro number one, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. The finish on this, it's an anodized finish. This is like a cherry red as you can see. Everything about it from the logo on the front and the back and the serial number, it's all just really clean. No burrs, no scratches. You got three buttons on the side, and we're gonna go close up and I'll show you guys exactly what this looks like. But you got three buttons, you got your fire button up top, super clicky. You got your power up, power down at the bottom. You got your USB port on the front, and then you got your screen on the front, which you can see your battery life, the resistance build you have on there. It shows the voltage as well as the wattage. This device holds an 18650. Right now I've got a Sony VTC4 18650 2000 milliamp hour battery in here and that is what Trent recommends. You got to use the VTC4 if you're going to be vaping above 20 watts. If you're going to be vaping at 20 watts or below, he recommends the AWIMR batteries. To get the full 30 watt experience, he recommends the VTC4. So yeah, a big pro is presentation and this thing does play the part. Every device that I screw onto here sits flush. It's got this cup which is carved out for your devices, your 22 millimeter devices. And anything that you put over the 22 millimeter device, like let's say the Russian Big, it sits over this device, but it sits evenly. And so it looks good. I mean, it still looks good. But any 22 millimeter device, whether you're using the K-Fun, an RDA, Nautilus tank, Clear Miser tank, whatever, etc., it's gonna look the tits. Look at that right there. Suck its tits! Mm -mm. You got two screws, one at the top, one at the bottom and the back. You unscrew those, pull the back off. You've got all your circuitry in here, which will show. You've got your battery, which you can pull out or you can leave in there. Stick your USB cord, which it comes with in this port, charger up on your computer, etc., and you're good to go. To fully charge on my iMac that I own, it's taken me about a couple hours. That's with a battery that's completely dead. This box mod, the circuitry, you don't even see it. Everything in there is super duper neat. You don't see any wires. I mean, it is, it's just professional looking. So I'm gonna take one more hit and we're gonna dive down, show you guys the goods. Let's go. All right, so here is the V3. And um, as you can see, you've got the screen right here. You got your fire button up top, nice clicky button. You got your power up, power down button down here. Right now the screen is locked. To unlock the screen, you gotta click that fire button five times. It lights up, goes back to the original screen where it shows your wattage, your voltage, and the resistance and battery life. 
here's your power down button right here you can press it you get 0.1 increments if you press it if you hold it down it starts to jump on down there Let's see if it round robins I don't think it does nope nope doesn't round robin want to go back up is your up button You've got your logo on the back, Hannah Mods V3. On the front, same thing, except it doesn't say the V3. It's got that and the serial number. There's your top, and this is the little well I was telling you about. 510 threads, buttery smooth. Everything is fit on this device. Everything I own is fit on this device, and it's fit on it flush. And the reason why Trent made this well the way it is is because even if it doesn't screw down all the way, it's still going to look flush on this device because of that little well. Now, this blemish right here, you see this spot, there's two spots up there? It's not even a blemish. That's actually from juice. I noticed that when juice gets on this device, I don't know if it's the way that this, um, this finish is on this device, the anodized, but it leaves a mark even when you wipe it off. So I have to go in with some soap and hot water and that, that comes right off. Just note that with the way this device is finished, it will stain on you with your juices. But it's no big deal. I mean, you can get it off. As long as it's not permanent, to me, it's not a big deal. You've got your air hole at the base for battery leakage. And then on the front, as you can see, you've got your USB port. Now, on the back, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like inside. Okay, take those screws out. Then all you gotta do is pop this back off, just like that. And there she is. You've got your uh, your battery on one side, and then your circuitry on the other. And this is this is what I was telling you guys about. Look how clean this is. Super clean. It makes me feel like the two hundred fifty six dollars that I spent on this device was definitely well worth it. Pop the back back on there. Insert the screws, screw them down, when you first tap that button you're going to see the Evolve DNA, it pops up on the screen. Like I mentioned on the screen, you got a wattage display, you got a voltage display, you got a resistance display, and you got a battery life display. I just showed you guys locked mode. I showed you how to unlock it. I'm going to show you guys how to do it in stealth mode. Now, to put this device in stealth mode, and basically what stealth mode means is when you fire this device, the screen is not going to light up. So when you fire it, when you don't fire it, it stays dark. You're turning the screen off. Okay, you don't see what wattage you're vaping at. You don't see the voltage. You don't see the battery life. It's just black. All you're going to do is you're going to hold down the fire button and the power down button for five seconds. There we go. So it's going to switch from normal to stealth and then you let it go. Also, to put this in stealth mode, you got to make sure that this screen is locked first. Otherwise, it's just going to fire and fire and fire. Now we're going to unlock it. One, two, three, four, five nothing it's firing but it's not showing anything on the screen and that's stealth mode now to take it back to stealth mode we're going to reverse it we're going to do the same thing one two three four five we locked it hold the fire button down and the power down button down at the same time and then stealth mode pops up wait an additional five seconds boom let it go unlock the lock screens back on to lock the power all you're gonna do is hold the power up and the power down at the same time boom it's locked okay so no going up no going down it's just gonna tell you that that power is locked to reverse that you're going to do the same thing hold both these buttons the power up and power down at the same time Boom, it goes back. Now I'm able to adjust my wattage just like I was able to before. 
if you get a message that says check atomizer, basically what it's saying is the DNA does not detect an atomizer, one, the atomizer is shorted out, two, or the atomizer resistance is incorrect for the power setting. So if you've got a, if you've got a rebuildable on here and you rebuilt a microcoil and for some reason you're shorting out because the wires are overlapping, the outside wires, you know, anything that would cause a short, it's basically going to say, check atomizer. Hey, you need to go fix this. This isn't right. Or you may also get a check atomizer because, hey, you've built a coil that is either higher than 3.3 ohms or is lower than 0.3 ohms. It also may say shorted too. I've never seen the screen say shorted. Usually when I have a coil that is not up to par with this device, it's it's not going to fire because there's there's a problem with you know the coil itself shorting out and I have to go in and fix it. It's never said shorted and basically when it says shorted the atomizer or wiring are short circuited um, which is a, a not good. The main error message that I've seen in the past has been check atomizer. Another message is check battery and when you see the screen say check battery it's basically saying the battery is below 3.1 volts and needs to be either recharged or changed out. You also may get a another message on here that says weak battery and basically what that's telling you is that the is that the battery sags excessively when firing. Uh, this typically means that the user is not using a high rate battery like a VTC4 which I've gotten here or like an AWIMR if you're firing 20 watts or below. Uh, you can still use the uh, VTC4 obviously for uh, 20 watts or below. It's just not recommended to use something like a regular AWIMR if you're going to be firing above 20 watts. And basically what the uh, what the weak battery is telling you is that the battery you have in there is not up to par. You need to put a better quality battery in there like the VTC4. You may also get another error message that says too hot. This DNA30 chip has onboard temperature sensing. Okay, it will shut down and display this message if the internal board temperature becomes excessive. And that's a good thing to have. You don't want your board frying on you. And, and that's that's the beauty of having, uh, you know, Evolve's chip in here. 94% of the time, it's not going to let you down. And that is a good rating to have. You may also get another message that says, too low power setting. The DNA30 puts out a minimum of 4 volts, okay? With low power settings, 7 to 8 watts, and low resistance atomizers below 2 ohms, the DNA will sometimes be unable to provide a low enough power output to be power regulated. If this is the case, the ohms display will be flashing. The device will still operate, but it's just letting you know. Okay, for example, watch this. So I've got a 1.1 ohm build in here, right? It fires at 23 watts. Perfect. That resistance is not flashing. Now, I'm going to take it down to, let's say, let's say 15. 15 should be okay, but I just want to test it. Yep, perfect. Okay, let's take it to 10. Yep, there it goes. It's starting to flash. Basically, it's saying it's too low of a power setting for this build. Okay, so you got to take it back up. Okay, another error message, device resets. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the type of battery you have in here. It basically questions, hey, do you have the right battery for this device, especially if you're firing at 20 watts or above. If you're using something like an AWIMR and you're vaping at 25 watts, that's not good. And you may get this error message, device resets. If the battery is not able to power the device at the desired setting or the battery is excessively discharged, the device may go immediately in a low voltage shutdown. Okay? So yeah, that's basically saying make sure you have the right battery in here. Okay? Another thing this device does is it auto powers down. So you guys see the screen is not lit up. Okay? You have to hit a button and then the screen pops back up and you can vape away. After a while, 15 seconds or longer after you fire the device, it starts to go into auto shutdown where the screen just shuts down, but all you have to do is click on this button, it uh, pops back up and you can vape away. The material in the casing is billet 6061 aluminum. Just like I mentioned before, this aluminum has been anodized. We're gonna go ahead, go back to the original screen. I'm gonna vape on her for a few more minutes. See you soon. 
All right, so that is a close-up look for the HANA V3 mod. I've been vaping on this thing for about a week and a half now, and I've really put it through its paces. I've done tons of different builds, all the way from 0.3 ohms to 2.5 ohms. Okay, I know that you could go up to 3.3 ohms, but I really wanted to push the envelope as far as sub-ohming. Okay, because I know a lot of you guys out there love to sub-ohm, and you like your sub-ohm builds, 0.8 ohms, all the way down to 0.6, to 0.5, even to 0.3. And I was able to build this sucker at 0.3 ohms and vape it at 30 watts and it hit like a train. I was able to do a build for this sucker at 0.4 ohms and vape it at 30 watts and I like that even better. But my favorite sub-ohm build for this device was a dual super nano coil at 0.5 ohms. My favorite sub-ohm build by far. I got more power. It seemed like I had more power. The vape was more flavorful. It hit harder. Uh, it was just my preferred. For me, on a DNA 20 or a DNA 30, you can't ever go wrong with a 1.1 to a 1.8 ohm micro cool build. And right now I've got a 1.1 build. I'm vaping it at 23 watts. I'm actually going to take it up to uh, 25 watts. I am content with this right here. Now, there are cons to this. I mentioned all the pros. I'm leaving the cons for last. The biggest con of this device is battery life. For this 1.1 ohm coil build, anything above one ohms, your battery life really starts to extend, okay? And you can get three to five to maybe even six hours of battery life depending on what that build is. So with this 1.1 ohm build, if I vape that at straight 30 watts, I can get about three three hours out of it, give or take, depending on how much I'm vaping, chain vaping. If I'm chain vaping, maybe two and a half, but about three hours. With anything lower than that, like with my favorite sub-ohm build at 0.5 ohms, I could only go for maximum hour and 45 minutes to two hours. And that's at 30 watts. That's vaping straight 30 watts. That's still good regulated. So yeah, that is the biggest con for this device. Also, keep in mind, the software in that chip, the DNA 20 chips, the DNA 30 chips, it's evolved so fast. And we're using these same type of batteries with the same type of battery chemistry. The batteries really are having a hard time keeping up. That's going to be the biggest problem with this DNA 30 is that it's so far ahead of the evolution of batteries. The other small con that I have is that with this finish on this device, I find that anything that leaks onto this device, e-liquid, it stains it, okay? And it's, it's, it's kind of a bitch getting that stain off. I mean, you can get it off, but I gotta mention that as a con. Other than that, this device is stellar. Highly recommended. It cost me $256. Do I think it's worth it? Hell freaking yeah, because you know what? I'm probably going to be using this device about 90% of the time until something comes along that's even better. Maybe the case. But this thing is kick-ass. I remember I posted on Instagram the box. Okay, the box is like this big compared to the device, okay? So I know it scared some of you guys. It's not big at all, okay? And it fits in my hand just nice. This is Rip Trippers, and remember, smoking is dead, vaping is the future, and the future is now.